Welcome to Covenant Health Spine Class. This video will help you better prepare for your upcoming spine surgery. During this video, we will talk about pre-op exercises, pre-op checklists, preparing your home for easy transition back home, pain management, discharge plans, how to care for yourself at home after surgery, signs and symptoms to look for after surgery, spine precautions, post-op activity, and body mechanics. Now, let's get you ready for your surgery. In your book, you will find pre-op exercises you need to perform a week or two before your surgery. The sooner you can get started, the better you can build strength and endurance for your spine surgery. These exercises help strengthen your muscles and make them more flexible for surgery and rehabilitation. Perform these exercises twice a day, 20 reps each time, and hold each 10 to 15 seconds. Let pain be your guide and perform them to the best of your ability. All of these exercises should be pain free. Consult with your physician if pain prevents you from continuing the exercise program. One week before your surgery, stop taking medications that contain aspirin and anti-inflammatories, such as Motrin, Naproxen, Advil, Aleve, and Vitamin E. If you are on Coumadin, check with your surgeon for special instructions on stopping this medication. You will need to prepare your home for when you return. Here are some things you can do to plan ahead. Move rugs, electrical cords, and furniture out of the way. These can be tripping hazards. Buy frozen dinners. These are easy to pop in the microwave. Buy paper plates to keep cleanup minimal after your meals. Mow your yard or arrange to have this done for you. Change your bed so you can return to fresh linens and reduce your chances of getting an infection. Place night lights in a hallway, bedroom, bathrooms, and any room you may need to access at night. Place frequently used kitchen items on the countertop so you do not have to bend over to get them. Pay your bills so you don't have to worry about this after your surgery. Have support lined up to assist you during the first week home, especially if you live alone. Have help lined up to help keep food and water available for your pets. Line up someone who can walk your dog for the first week after your surgery. If you have a cat, place the litter box on a high table so you don't have to bend down to clean it. Place pillows in the car for the ride home. You can place these behind your back for comfort. Three days prior to surgery, begin bathing with the chlorhexidine soap that will be given to you at your pre-admission testing visit at the hospital or surgeon's office prior to your surgery. The night before your surgery, do not eat or drink anything after midnight unless instructed otherwise. That includes no gum, candy, or mints. If you must take medication the morning of your surgery, do so with a small sip of water. Do not bring medications from home to the hospital. They will be provided to you by the hospital pharmacy. Please bring loose-fitting clothing such as gym shorts and a t-shirt or sweatpants and sweatshirt. Tennis shoes with a rubber sole are preferred. Therapists prefer shoes that will tie on or strap on your foot for safety reasons. For your personal hygiene bag, bring items like toothpaste, toothbrush, deodorant, shampoo, powders, lotions, or any special soaps you like. We ask that you do not bring perfumed, aerosol, or Vaseline products. You will be instructed by your surgeon as to when you can bathe. On the day of your surgery, arrive at the hospital two hours prior to your surgery start time so there is sufficient time to start your IV, prep surgical site, and answer any questions you may have. During your pre-admission testing visit, you will be instructed where to check in for surgery. After your surgery, you will go to the recovery room for an hour or two. After recovery, you will be taken to your room. The rest of the day will include pain control measures, taking a short walk, eating foods, and drinking fluids to rehydrate yourself. You will be assisted to a chair for all of your meals while you are here, including the day of surgery. 
You will be instructed on breathing exercises, ankle exercises to prevent blood clots, and pain control with IV medications. Physical therapy and occupational therapy will begin the day after your surgery if your surgeon orders these services. Activity after surgery is very important to prevent blood clots, pneumonia, and infection. The next morning after your surgery, expect to be assisted up to a chair as early as 7 a.m. You should stay out of the bed as much as possible unless instructed otherwise by your surgeon or nurse. Our goal is to make you as pain-free as possible after surgery. Pain management is not perfect and you will have some discomfort after your procedure. One key step in pain control is to take or ask for pain relief medications when the pain first begins. It's harder to ease pain once it has taken hold. Good pain control will help you enjoy greater comfort as you heal. With less pain, you can start walking, doing your exercises, and getting your strength back more quickly. Your pain meds will be provided by your nurse as ordered by your surgeon. Please let your nurse know when you are uncomfortable and they can check to see if you can have your next dose of meds or if perhaps another comfort measure might be helpful. We strongly encourage you to time your meds so you're receiving a dose 30 minutes before a therapy session. Your nurse will administer pain medications only if your vital signs are stable, you are not too sedated, and you're not nauseated. Eat food before you begin taking pain medication. Do not take them on an empty stomach and take nausea medication. Certain criteria must be met to discharge from the hospital. You must be able to walk independently, be eating and drinking well, be able to urinate, and take oral pain medication. We do not want you to go home alone. You need to have someone with you to be your caregiver. If equipment is needed, your case manager will order it for you while you are in the hospital. Your surgeon will place orders for your discharge from the hospital. A medical doctor may also have seen you while you are in the hospital. If so, the medical doctor must discharge you in addition to the surgeon. The medical doctor will order the medications you will go home on and evaluate your final lab work. Some general discharge instructions include, if you were given a brace or a rigid collar, wear it when you are out of bed. If you were given a soft collar, wear it when you are resting. Walk as much as desired, gradually increasing your distance. You may shower according to your surgeon's instructions. Do not take a bath in a tub. If you're not wearing a brace, you may drive short distances if your surgeon's orders allow you to drive. Do not lift more than 10 pounds. If you are unsure of the weight of an object, the rule is if it is heavier than a gallon of milk, do not lift the object. Six to 12 weeks after surgery, you may return to light duty or physical labor if told to do so by your surgeon. At 12 to 24 weeks after your surgery, continue to avoid heavy lifting and repetitive bending and twisting. These are just general instructions and your surgeon may instruct you differently. Always follow your surgeon's instructions. There are a few things you can do to manage any discomfort you may have upon returning home. Here are a few tips. Take pain meds as prescribed by your surgeon. During the first three months after a fusion surgery, it is important not to take any over-the-counter anti-inflammatory meds such as ibuprofen, Motrin, Advil, and Aleve. It is also important not to use tobacco or nicotine during this period. You may apply ice to your incision area for 20 minutes to help with discomfort. Gentle massage to the muscle spasm area may also help reduce discomfort. Change your position every 45 minutes throughout the day. Elevate your arms on pillows. You will receive a breathing device in the hospital. It is called an incentive spirometer. Continue to use your incentive spirometer at home. Take 10 breaths on your incentive spirometer every hour. Did you know that taking pain medication can cause constipation? We recommend you limit your use of narcotics if you experience constipation. If you experience difficulty having a bowel movement, here are some additional ways to help you feel more comfortable. 
Use stool softeners and laxatives. Add fiber by taking a supplement such as Metamucil. Increase water intake. Drink prune or apple juice. Eat a high fiber diet, which includes high fiber brand cereal, whole grains, bran, and brown rice. Vegetables such as carrots, broccoli, and greens. Fresh and dried fruit, nuts, and beans. Wound care instructions will be provided to you upon discharge from the hospital. You should notify your surgeon of increased swelling, redness, drainage at the incision site, foul smelling drainage, increased pain at the incision site, or fever greater than 101 degrees. All of these are signs of infection. If it is after regular business hours, most surgeons have an after hours clinic and no appointment is necessary. You may be seen there to avoid an emergency room wait. Although the risk is low, blood clots are a risk after any surgery. While you're in the hospital, white compression stockings may be placed on your legs to compress your veins and reduce your risk for blood clots. Other things you can do to reduce your risk of blood clots are frequent foot and ankle pumps, walking, and elevating your feet and legs. Signs of a blood clot include swelling in the thigh, calf, or ankle that does not go down when you elevate your legs and pain and tenderness in your calf. A pulmonary embolism may occur if a blood clot breaks off in the vein and travels to your lungs. This is an emergency and you should call 911 immediately. Signs of a pulmonary embolism include sudden chest pain, shortness of breath, difficult or rapid breathing, sweating, and confusion. There are some very important precautions after spine surgery to remember. We call them the BLTs, and these rules are only for patients who have had lower back surgery. You do not need to follow the BLTs if you have had upper back or neck surgery. BLT stands for no bending over, no lifting objects heavier than 10 pounds for one or two months after surgery and no twisting the spine. Your physical therapist will review and demonstrate BLTs with you during your hospital stay. Thank you for choosing Covenant Health for your spine care. We look forward to caring for you during your upcoming spine surgery. If you have any questions, contact your hospital spine coordinator.